Master Bike Cornerstone. Thanks for taking some time off to be with me this morning and, and uh, just a beautiful day in Central Oregon, the blue skies and you hear the birds chirping and the neighbor's dog barking, it's Memorial Day and uh, we're just enjoying a beautiful day here and just wanted to share uh, just a little bit today about uh, some of the stuff that I've been laying down and, and just really want to continue to instill into who we are that as, as we're stepping into this new year. That this is our eighth year, the year of new beginnings at Cornerstone, and I'm, I'm really laying down a, a strong foundation for who you are and, and a transition uh, that will revolutionize your life. So we've been talking about the new creation and some of how that uh, influences your life and the truths that you can expect to manifest and be established in you. So I want to start off right away in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. We've been walking this through for a while, but you know what? Repetition is safe. A friend of mine, Larry Black, many years ago told me that, and you know what? It has been a truth in my life. That was way back in the 90s. So as we remind ourselves through repetition, we will become a stronger and have more laid down truth as our foundations so and we can walk it out. So let's go there. Second Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, that means everything up to this point, we're laying down, boom, we've got a solid thing to build on. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. And, and I've been talking about how that really works out and, and, and some of the stuff about the divine nature and how the divine nature en engages in that. But I want to jump over to another scripture. Go a little bit to the left. We're going to go over here. I've got my sticky notes going here. And we're going to be in Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. We're going to go through verses 2 through 11. And I want to just, uh, just flesh this out. What does the new creation look like? How does it respond? How is the new nature, divine nature, mixing in and, and locking us in to a strong, strong bond with God? Romans 6, 2 through 11. We're talking about, well, let's just go back up to 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace might increase? Not as new creations, we're not, but let's go on. May it never be, Paul, he says here, how shall we who died, past tense, died to sin, still live in it? We're looking at two distinct times here. We died, past. We live now. It's a now word that we're living. This new creation is a now thing. We don't have to wait for the great glorious by and by we step into it now from the moment that we accept Christ as Lord this is a new now reality it is alive it is influencing and we must focus and get acquainted with the newness of who we are in Christ verse 3 says or do you not know he's just reminding us okay this is repetition do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death that was the symbolism of the baptism that we received when we accepted Christ. We got baptized. I don't care if it was a little sprinkling. I don't care if they tried to drown you by holding you under. All right. I don't care if it was in a bathtub. I don't care if it was in a river. I don't care if it was in a lake, stream, anywhere. You were symbolically stepping into this. So we were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death in order... Oh, oh. That symbolism, that event, there's something that goes along with that. In order that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. That's the new creation. The newness of life, the new creation, old things have passed away, all things have become new, divine nature superimposed over us, within us, busted out of us, expressing the divine nature and heart of the Father in our lives, transforming us into a new creation, that we can walk in this newness of life. This is the new created life that we have. Verse 5 says, For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, 
certainly we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. It wasn't just the crucifixion. Hallelujah. We've been separated and removed. That dead carnal nature is gone from us. But we are now living from a place of being seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places, living a resurrected life, the resurrected life of power that God has designed for you to be. It's a restoration. It's a reset back to the original intention that God had in the Adam, when Adam and Eve, that was his intention before all the things that went sideways on us. Let's continue. So verse six says, knowing this, okay, knowing what? Knowing that there's this newness in us, knowing it, reminding us, getting acquainted with this, knowing this, that our old self was crucified, was past tense, done, gone, out of the way. All right. It's moved out of the way. It was crucified with him that our body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Bam! It's no longer an enslavement. We are free. New creations have been set free from all that garbage. There's no chains. There's no bondages. There's no ties that are holding you there. Your choices are your choices now. You can walk free again. Verse 7 says, for he who has died is freed from sin. You died. Good deal. Good. You're free. Be free. Walk free. Live free. Verse 8 says, now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over him. He died once. We died once. We don't have to die again. We don't have to get back up there and crucify the flesh and all that stuff that religion has told us, all those things that have been taught to us incorrectly. We died. Done deal. Done. Carnal nature, done. Finished. Burned up. Gone. New creation, alive and well in you. In you. In you. Ah. Hallelujah. Verse 10. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Listen to that. That is Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ, living, enthroned in heavenly places, living a the life he lives to God. He continues to live this out. If Jesus can do that, then you and I can do the same, living unto God. That gives me hope. Verse 11, even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Just like Jesus is living his life to God, you can do the same. And I want to close with this. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, 4, and 5. And we'll wrap this thing up because this, is, this has been a beautiful time. And I just want to really close on a high note. So, uh, Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. And I'm going to lay this on thick. So you ready? All right. You've got a firm foundation, cornerstone Jesus Christ, 4 and 5, Ephesians 2. But God being rich in mercy because of his great love for which he loved us even when we were dead past tense in our transgressions made us alive present tense reality right now together with Christ by grace you have been saved present tense experience overcomer new creation divine nature alive and well in you that's who you are that's who i proclaim myself over for me and as well for you so i remind you repetition is safe god bless you thanks for spending some time with me i'm looking forward to seeing you next week have a great one god bless you amen